Hey, thanks for pressing play and watching the gouge. For you first-time viewers, my name is David Leslie. I am a Marine Corps combat veteran. I served in the Marine Corps for eight years. Spent another several years working with the Defense Department in Iraq and Afghanistan as a private military contractor. When I came back home, I found the Tufelhunen Project, which is a Veterans Outreach Foundation, a small foundation, something that I am insanely proud of here in Dallas-Fort Worth. I am also a veterans advocate, and I am here to deliver you a powerful message for this Memorial Day weekend. However, I have to start off with an apology. To my brothers and sisters in the Corps, I know I represent y'all as a Marine Corps veteran. Though, I'm a, though I may lose my tack and I, though I may lose my bearing in this message, I apologize because I know I represent more than just myself. To my Blackheart brothers, I apologize. However, those that y'all, those that have served with me, understand exactly how I am when I lose my patience, because this is one pissed-off Marine, one pissed-off veterans advocate, who is absolutely angry, not just at the media and what they're not telling you, the American public, but also the treatment that is going on to our beloved veteran community and the treatment that is going to happen to our men and women who are serving now, who are about to come into our growing veteran family. The media is not telling you the entire story. When the scandal broke in Phoenix, Arizona with Sharon Hillman, 40 veterans died on fake waiting list. 40. You know what else is tragic? At that same time, over a thousand veterans nationwide committed suicide because of complications with PTSD or complications with whatever that they had when they came home from combat. When they came home to a nation that they served and sacrificed for. Over a thousand. Nobody is telling you that. At the same time, they ain't even touching the tip of the iceberg of what is being done to our veterans. Sharon Hellman, who is the director of the Phoenix VA, when this scandal broke because she was putting out a fake waiting list, she was also the director of the VA Medical Center in Spokane, Washington, who received bonuses because she had lied about veteran suicides. She lied to ensure that her performance looked stellar. She had 22 veteran suicides in less than two years that she was the director of the VA Medical Center in Spokane, Washington. 22. She reported to the top brass only nine and received a bonus for her performance. She lied and stole taxpayer money. That is something that the mainstream media isn't telling you. She was caught. She was caught by the top brass in VA instead of being put on leave instead of being fired, instead of being held accountable. She was transferred from Spokane, Washington to Phoenix, Arizona, where she continued her crooked, lying ass ways and created fake waiting lists that ended the lives of 40 veterans. 40. But there is something else that they're not telling you. This scandal runs even deeper. Even deeper. And it is absolutely fucking atrocious. I understand that my brothers and sisters, that the veteran community, want to remain tactful and honorable. But it is absolutely important that you know the entire picture because they're not telling you. The crooked ass politicians up there in D.C. knew, knew, and they didn't do anything. This is everything that they knew, and I am more than likely not even scratching the surface. I have been saying this, I have been posting it, I have been putting it out online for months, months, and not one single reporter, not one person, not from the local news, not from the national news, has even shed a light on what this, what the treatment is, or I should say the criminal neglect that is happening to our veteran community, to our beloved 
brothers and sisters who openly gave up and sacrificed and served not only our federal government that has turned their back on us, but the American people. So during this Memorial Day weekend, I challenge you to share this message. Blast this message all over social media before the media and this administration comes up with another excuse on how they didn't know, because they did. From 2005 to 2008, the Dayton VA Medical Center, you're going to hear this medical center quite a bit. From 2005 to 2008, the Dayton VA Medical Center paid out $940,000 to families because of medical malpractice, which led to the death of eight veterans. Eight. From 2009 to 2010, the same medical center, the Dayton VA Medical Center, had a total of 72 medical malpractice claims filed against them. Within that same year, you can add two more to that list because two more veterans died because of their mismanagement, because of their malpractice at the, D at the Dayton VA Medical Center. From 2006 to 2009, and this was reported in the Military Times. The Military Times wrote an article as of December 6, 2013 about this topic. They reported it. It is in black and white. It was blasted and nobody paid attention. From 2006 to 2009, 101 adverse searchable events occurred. The Government Accountability Office knew about this. They created an investigation and they concluded out of the 101 adverse medical procedures that were done in the VA medical centers all over this nation, 21 deaths, 21 veterans could still be alive today because it was preventable. It was preventable. The Government Accountability Office was quoted saying, the Veterans Health Administration cannot provide reasonable assurance that medical centers are using peer reviews as intended. The reason why there was 101 adverse medical procedures is because the VA was not following its own policies when it comes to peer reviews, when a doctor provides a review of another doctor. The Military Times reported that the VA, that the VA department fails to follow its own policies on monitoring subpar doctors at four facilities. One of them is here in Dallas, Texas. The other is in Nashville, Tennessee, Seattle, Washington, and Augustus, Maine. They were not following their own procedures, which led to the death of many, many veterans. And nobody's telling you about it. From 2007 to 2012, the VA Medical Center in Atlanta, Georgia, whose VA medical director was James Clark. He had patient deaths because of mismanagement, because of improper procedures, because he failed to direct his medical center appropriately. Failed and lied about it. He absolutely lied to the top brass about all the mismanagement, about all the malpractice, about everything that was going on there in Atlanta, Georgia. That VA medical center received anywhere between $8,000 to $24,000 in bonuses. That is taxpayer money that they lied in order to get and stole from you. The same director, James Clark, who during that time, again, was the director of the VA medical center in Atlanta, Georgia, in 2010, he received $17,000 in bonuses. In 2011, he received $13,000 in bonuses. And he lied about it. Lied. From 2008 to 2013, a whistleblower, Oliver Mitchell, who worked at the VA Medical Center in Los Angeles, not only did he file a formal complaint to the Inspector General, 
he had audio from his supervisors instructing him to purge, to delete backlog medical appointments and backlogged medical exams. Request for veterans to receive medical exams. He was told by his supervisors to delete them. The Inspector General knew about it and he didn't run an investigation at all. The only thing that he did was send that complaint back down to Los Angeles and told them exactly who complained and what he was complaining about. That was a whistleblower who was completely thrown to the wolves. In 2008 is when it was reported to the news there in Los Angeles and was handed over this audio that the whistleblower was instructed to delete all this stuff, all of it, and they didn't do anything, nothing. March 20th of 2008, Norma Perez, who was hired by the VA to be a PTSD program coordinator and a PTSD psychologist, put out an email to everybody in her medical center the here in Tyler, Texas, she was quoted saying, I'd like to suggest that you refrain from giving a diagnosis of PTSD to our veterans straight out. This means that veterans will not get the disability benefits and health care for PTSD. She went on to say that we really do not have the time to do extensive testing that should be done to determine PTSD for our veterans. This is a PTSD program coordinator. This is a PTSD psychologist who was hired by the VA to help our veterans who told everybody not to help. Again, quoted, we do not have the time to do the extensive testing that is needed to determine PTSD for our veterans. I wear this ring to sit there and show everybody that I come into contact with that 22 veterans on average commit suicide daily because of PTSD. And a VA psychologist told her people to not die to do not diagnose veterans with PTSD, knowing that they wouldn't get the health care they needed. May 2009, Eric Konsecki urged a Democratic congressman from North Carolina, his name was Brad Miller, to reverse his decision and put back into circulation a whistleblower, a Dr. Ann Chalkle, C-H-A-C-K-O-L. She was a whistleblower. She went to her congressman because of in intimidation practices because of bullying, because of harassment from her supervisor, a Dr. Mona, Mel, or Mona Melham, M-E-L-H-A-M. Congress did an investigation for this whistleblower. They did an investigation. The subcommittee concluded that this Dr. Mona Melham, M-E-L-H-A-M, deleted, destroyed 30 years of research. And Eric Kinsegi told Brad Miller, a congressman, to put this whistleblower back into circulation, to put her back under the same supervisor she was reporting. You know what happened after Congress concluded their investigation? Do you understand what Legionnaire's disease is? Legionella, that staff mishandled Legionella, which infected the water supply at that VA medical center, and it contributed to five veterans dying, losing their lives. Two thousand and eleven, right back to Dayton. This time, instead of the medical center, it was the dental clinic there in Dayton. The director was Guy Richardson. 
he was the director of that dental clinic. This clinic had some of the most atrocious poor medical practices known to man. You want to talk about mistreatment? You want to talk about completely disregarding the lives of the men and women that sacrificed everything for this nation? Because of their mismanagement, because of their poor medical practices at this dental clinic in Dayton, at the VA Medical Center, hundreds of veterans tested positive for hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV because of blood-borne pathogens. Because they didn't give a fuck. From 2013 to 2014, Congress put a bill on the floor that simply stated VA disability claims are to be approved or denied within 125 days after that veteran submits his claim to the VA with an accuracy rating of 98%. You want to know why they put this bill on the floor? Because the Congress concluded that it not only took three years, three years for a veteran to get his claim back from the VA because of service disabilities that he got, he or she got while they were on active duty, is because when it came back for the first time, it was denied. And I'm I and I am one of them. I'm supposed to have hearing aids. The VA refuses to pay for it or acknowledge the fact that I have hearing loss because of my eight years of service. And I am one of hundreds of thousands of veterans that have their claims denied. Not only do I have proof in the VA, but I got proof in the private sector. And there are thousands of veterans just like me that have done the exact same thing. Guess where that bill has gone? It's gone nowhere. Just like the VA accountability bill that was denied yesterday by the Democrats in Senate because they would rather look out for the public unions that work in the VA versus the veterans that sacrificed, that served, that provided the freedom for those fucking criminals to sit in their leather seats and snub their nose at the men and women that understand what service really is, that understand what sacrifice really is. They denied it because they would rather look out for the money that is going into their pockets to re-elect them back in the same leather seat so they can sit on their fat ass and not do a damn thing for the men and women that understand what service is. In 2013, Eric Konsecki, you're going to hear his name a lot, this guy is more, more riddled with scandals than the President of the United States and he still has his job. 2013, Eric Konsecki allowed bonuses knowing, knowing that there was health care scandals, knowing that there was financial mismanagement, there was mismanagement of taxpayer funds still allowed bonuses to be handed out to these lying sacks of shit. In Pittsburgh, Atlanta, Waco, Dayton, Dallas, and Buffalo. And you want to talk to me about accountability? You want to put out on the news about how they didn't know. You cannot provide a reasonable enough of an excuse from a wartime commander that he didn't know what was going on in the department that he is in charge of. A wartime commander with all the logistics that are going on. I was an NCO in combat. I understood my responsibilities to, that, to my men as a non-commissioned officer, and I understood how much work was put in. You cannot sit there and tell me, you cannot provide a reasonable enough excuse on how a wartime commander, with everything that's going on, with all the moving parts on the battlefield that are happening from 
from second to second to second with all the men underneath him. You cannot give me an excuse, a reasonable enough excuse, how he didn't know. Especially in 2012. This is an email that was sent to the Honorable Eric Konsecki by Jeff Miller, who is a chairman, and by a board member, Bob Fieldman wanting Eric Konsecki to explain himself why over a hundred million dollars has been used improperly for conferences that the VA had. Six point one million dollars was used for a conference at Walt Disney World and their spa resort. There isn't one corporation here in the private sector that would waste that much money. In 2010, the VA wasted $20 million in conferences. In 2011, they blew $22 million in conferences. Conferences. It's in black and white. Here it is. And you're going to talk to me? You're going to put out on the news about him needing to resign. This is willful criminal neglect. This is people that have willfully lied, that have destroyed the lives of thousands of veterans, thousands of families, thousands of men and women that have openly sacrificed, that picked up a rifle, loaded a magazine, and defended freedom abroad. They willfully turned their back. These self-serving motherfuckers allowed our veterans to die. They lied about it. They stole taxpayer money because how else are you going to explain that? How else are you going to explain them lying in order to receive performance bonuses? They lied to ensure that their performance was in part for them to receive thousands of dollars in bonuses, thousands of taxpayer dollars. And the director of the VA allowed it, he knew about it. Written proof that he knew, he knew. People in Congress knew and they didn't do anything. This administration knew and they didn't do anything. The President of the United States is going to sit here and say that he is absolutely confident in the abilities of Eric Konsecki. Bullshit. Eric Konsecki is a fucking meat puppet who is doing exactly what the President wants, which is allowing the men and women that gave their lives for this nation to die. And you want to talk to me about accountability? You want to put out on the local news and the national news about accountability and about resignations? How about you start putting out, how about you start asking the question, who's going to prison? Because if this was a corporation, if this was a CEO, if this was a CFO of a major corporation, they wouldn't be just put in prison, they would be buried underneath it. And this self-serving bureaucracy that allowed our men and women, my beloved veteran family, to die so they can receive money, so they can fill their own pockets, allowed it to happen. Got Democrats in the Senate that would rather pay tribute to their unions who are putting money into their re-election campaigns versus serving the men and women that gave them the freedom for them to sit on their fat asses. I got trees outside my home that produce thousands of gallons of oxygen every year that they need to go apologize to. And you're not reporting it. The American people are not seeing what is willfully happening to our veterans. Here's the bigger picture. You want to maintain a volunteer military force? 
the future of our military and the safety of this nation, the national security of this nation, is held up by the treatment of veterans for future generations to willfully enlist into the military. They are going to gauge their future based off the treatment of past veterans. When they see the treatment like this happening to veterans on a daily basis, they're not going to enlist. We are going to lose our volunteer military force because of the willful neglect of the director of the VA and his subordinates who would rather lie and steal taxpayer money by the willful criminal neglect of this administration that would rather have veterans die We are going to lose that volunteer force. You cannot sit there and tell me that this was an accident. You cannot provide enough of an excuse to tell me that they didn't know. You cannot tell me that a wartime commander knew. He's an oxygen thief and he should go to prison. And every single person who knew about this and didn't do anything should go to prison. This is criminal neglect. This is willful neglect. Because of their willful neglect, more veterans have died than those lives lost in the war in Iraq. More. As I've stated in the very beginning of this message, from the time the news broke in Phoenix, Arizona, to this very day, over a thousand veterans have committed suicide. And where's the media crying out for them? You want to talk to me about reform? Where's the DOJ pushing criminal investigations on these lying, oxygen thieving sacks of shit that are self-serving in our federal government? They would rather steal your taxpayer money. If they do this to us, if they willfully do this kind of criminal neglect to us, the veteran community, what makes you think as a voter they care about you? These people are self-serving. All they care about is themselves. That's it. They've proven it. Don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. You cannot sit there and tell me that he did not know this came to him. Is the media reporting it? No. They're not. I challenge you during this Memorial Day weekend to spread this video, to share it in every aspect of social media that you could possibly imagine and challenge your family and your friends to deliver this message worldwide before Tuesday morning when the White House and General Konseki come up with another excuse on why hundreds of thousands of veterans were left to die from a department that is supposed to take care of them. I challenge you, Memorial Day weekend is about remembering the ones who gave up their lives for our freedom. These people aren't Americans. They're nowhere close to being Americans. They have created a career based off of lies. And it's a crying shame how back in 1907 Theodore Roosevelt warned us of this. A citizen, who, a citizen who sits there and claims to be American, but claims to be something else, isn't an American at all. Those are Theodore Roosevelt's own words. He sat there and said, in this nation, we have room but for one flag, and that is the American flag. In this nation, we have room for but one language, and that is the English language. 
And in this nation, we have room for but what? One loyalty. And that is the loyalty to the American people. He warned us. And now look at what we have. Deliver this message and spread it. Spread it like wildfire. Because this goes way beyond veterans who've lost their lives. This goes to the future of our national security as a country. This goes to the future of our freedom. This goes to the future of our quality of life. This goes to future to everything we hold dear as American people. Make this impact so great that the media cannot ignore it. Because the proof is out there and they're not telling it. And they're just as wrong as the sexist shit up in D.C. Thanks for pressing play and watching the gouge. Thanks for listening to this message. The one thing you do not do is piss off a Marine. Follow me on Facebook at David.MLeslie and take a look at everything that my Veterans Outreach Foundation is doing for our local veterans here in Dallas Fort Worth. Because it's not the VA that's helping, it's the private sector. It's the American men and women that have so much honor and dignity that they look out for their veterans versus the self-serving sacks of shit up in D.C. Follow us. Check us out. Follow me. Check me out. See everything that I'm putting out. Because this needs to come back to being a God-fearing nation. Because if our moral code has slipped that far, that we allow people that openly sacrifice their lives for us, if we are allowing them to die, then we have fallen further in our moral code than you can only imagine. Take this time over the Memorial Day weekend and spread this message. Spread it loud and clear. Let it reach every single corner of this nation. Let every American hear what is happening to our veterans, our proud, our beloved men and women. I'm David Leslie, and this is The Gouge.